welcome to uh, this episode of In the Now with Jim Swilly. And uh, those of you who are just logging on uh, to see this, we're coming to you live from Metron. And uh, in our Metron service, uh, my son, Pastor Judas Swilly, is with us. And he just introduced Calvin Witcher. So you already know who he is. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can, uh, you can read about him on your own. But uh, for those of you who are here today, Metron, would you please welcome our new friend, Calvin Witcher. Calvin, we're glad that you're here. Welcome. Peace. What's on your heart today? You came all the way. Tell us where you came from and why are you here? Why are you here today, Calvin? What is the meaning of this? I'm bored. I have nothing else to do. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, honestly, I am just on a, well, thank you for having me here. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you for that warm welcome. I, um, I paid him to say that. <laughs> and um, I paid him in love. But honestly, I am just on a new path and journey with life and with spirit, and it's interesting. Sometimes I know and sometimes I don't know, which is probably a horrible thing to say for someone that has a um, prophetic calling on their life. That, but a lot of times I really don't know. So honestly, um, and a lot of ministers probably won't admit that. But that's kind of been the journey of late is to be fully available. You mentioned nothingness um, earlier. I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. I know that might not be the most spiritual thing for most of you out there, but um, there's one character, and I think her name's Arya, and she talks about, you know, um, you know, person has no face, no name, right? And I feel like I'm in that space of spirit where I have no name, I have no identity. It's just being there in the space of now and then allowing it to unfold as it is. So that's why I'm here, to witness with everyone what is to come. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> earlier in the session today, we led a meditation. I think that's something that you're familiar with. Tell yes. me. Uh, how did you get connected with that, and, and what are your thoughts about it? Well, it's very interesting because I grew up in the, uh, well, two parts of Christianity, Baptist side and Pentecostal side. We just called it Bapticostal because we were lazy and just made sense to shorten it up. And so we didn't grow up with meditation. As a matter of fact, we actually grew up with the understanding that meditation was uh, what those other people did. Right. We didn't do that because we were Christian. We prayed. That was more holy. And so in that regard, I did not really learn about meditation until I started transitioning from traditional church and then really understood it for what it was more from an eastern um, mindset even more of an indigenous um, mindset so when I look at meditation for me um, I kind of take it to more of the original meaning of it which actually means to mutter it means to actually speak to yourself which sometimes is contrary to right. a lot of thought with meditation which is to go silent um, I'm a big proponent that everything speaks to us, God, the universe, life, um, people, energy speaks to us. And so it's, meditation is more about tapping into that deeper side of communication to the um, knowing that, that which is unknown. And so that's how I often teach meditation. I love your quotes. It's very synchronistic with how I talk, which is if a thought comes up, have a conversation with the thought. Why is it there? That's you know, your body trying to communicate something to you, and for you to ignore it is tantamount to ignoring instruction, um, direction, intuition. So, um, yes, because oftentimes we're just too fast, too quick in life, so meditation allows us to actually hear the conversations that we are ignoring every day. It's interesting, uh, uh, you said your background was uh, similar to mine. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with people, some of whom are here today, Eddie, Doc, Francis, many of you who sort of came out of... Uh, Pentecostal background, charismatic, and are sort of in a different place of enlightenment. And to me, it's not an either or. To me, it yeah. it is the yeah. logical conclusion to that trajectory. Uh, whereas 30 years ago, I would have said, no, that's people who are letting themselves be deceived. No, it's this is where spirit has and is taking us. Right. To me, um, I, I won't say his name because he may not he might not want me to say his name. But there's somebody that I know, you probably know him too, Yes. who think, is uh, he's a prophet. Mm -hmm. He's a prophet. Yes. And he said, I went to, uh, he said, we were in Las Vegas. We went to uh, this guy, uh, Jonathan Edwards, who was calling mm -hmm. people out, who was, who was talking to people's, the energy of, of yeah. loved ones who had gone on. Yeah, and it maybe. said he was doing the exact same thing that I do. And he said, I didn't want to admit that. I said, well, no, it really is all the same thing. The knowledge yeah. of the Lord fills all the earth. Absolutely. We just call it by different names, whether you call it a prophet, an oracle, a medium. Um, and I operate in all those trajectories and frequencies. It depends on where I am. I tend to be very much a win in Rome, right. do as the Romans do. Um, some places I have a little more liberty 
to be a little more at home. In some places, it's a little more structured, a little more thought. So to the Jew, I become the Jew. To the Greek, I become the Greek. To someone that understands medium, I say I'm a medium. And someone that understands psychic, I say, hey, you know, I can tap into that space too. That's probably the best, not that I had any question about you being here, but that's, that's my confirmation. Okay. Because I'm, exa I'm exactly the same yeah. way. Uh, and to me, to, to um, uh, divide over buzzwords is counterproductive. Absolutely. Now, Judah mentioned tarot reading. Now, you say tarot cards. <laughs> for those of us that were, were raised with, you know, watch out for the devil, uh, that's like a ding, 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 ding. So I'm, uh, I wasn't going to discuss this, but I'm curious. Nothing is off limits with me. Uh, then uh, then explain to me why are you comfortable in that medium as well. You know, it's very interesting. I... Um, I still classify myself on some levels um, very much on the Christian spectrum, um, very much on the spectrum. In the sense of I, I grew up that way, it's very much part of my core, it's something I do not deny now, although I went through a phase that I did. Um, I think many people do while you're in the transition stage. All to really come back around and says, man, wow, the scriptures are super great. Exactly. Um, and especially if you go more on the um, divination esoteric side, which I won't do too much today, um, you start realizing that a lot of different um, sex use the scriptures pretty predominantly, the Kabbalic text, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes down to things like tarot, you almost can't get around these conversations if you are a studier of the scriptures. There's just no way around it. Divination is all in the scriptures. Exactly. Uh, um, claromancy is actually the official term for it, which they used to do casting of the lots as well. So they cast lots to try to figure out who the next disciple was going to be. Um, they cast lots to figure out who was causing this um, this storm out on the ocean to throw Jonah over. Um, nowhere is it condemned. Um, and it's always one of those interesting things. The disciples just didn't come out of the woodwork saying, oh, let's just cast lots, right. uh, which is actually a form of oracle energy, um, prophecy, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's one of those things like they had to have been doing that, I assume, in the time of Jesus. It's like your kids. When your kids grow up, it's not really a surprise who they're going to be. You see it. You live with them. Exactly. You're with them every day. And so it's very interesting. Once I started going back through the scriptures and tried to pull out things that didn't make sense at the time with my filter, the scriptures actually had a lot more life and light in them than I Agreed. was giving them credit for. So it makes it fun. So tarot's absolutely. Uh, I taught a few months ago about, uh, about the, the mystical that's in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And even when um, Saul wanted to have a conversation with Samuel, mm -hmm. and he goes to the witch of witch Endor. Endor. Uh, which, if, if you ever grew up watching Bewitched, Endora is named <laughs> no, after yeah. the Witch of Endor. And uh, not only does God allow it, Samuel actually does have a conversation with him. And it was like, it wasn't that surprising. You know, it's like, well, there, there he is, and he's talking, and he prophesied to him. And, and even things like, some, there's some, if you've really read the Old Testament, there's some stuff in there, like the Urim and the Thummim, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the breastplates that would, you know, certain stones would light up and it would give them direction. All these things now that, you know, t fundamentalist Christians would condemn, where you get that from? From the, the Bible. Bible. It's in the Bible. And even, even when uh, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? His disciples said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. The and he, Elias. Which was, he was, they're saying, so, some people say you're re reincarnated. Absolutely. And he didn't flinch at that. He said, oh, okay, well, who do you say that I am? He didn't say, devil, I bind that. You know, he <laughs> just said, he said, okay. And, and it's, it's just interesting how when you, and I like that you said there was a time you didn't identify as Christian because I, I understand that too. Oh, yeah. I, when somebody asked me, what do you do? I'm like, how do I explain to you what I do? Because if I say pastor, you're going to think something that's mm -hmm. not me. And if I say church, you're going to think something that's not Metron. I've, how, do I, how do I explain to you what it is that I do? Because I, I have great respect for the scriptures, and I love Jesus, and I'm a follower of Jesus. If, if that's what a Christian is, yes, I follow Jesus. Other people that say this is what Christianity is, and the way they advertise it, I think, well, if that's what Christianity is, then, then I'm not that. Right. Then please do not identify me as right. that. And it's funny because I actually don't, again, I don't necessarily go by the title. Um, if anything, I'm probably more of a heretic for most of my, um, which my is friends, not, which is fine. Heretic's not even a bad word. It's when not a bad word. you look at the, uh, the origin <laughs> of the word heretic, come on now. Somebody calls me a heretic, I'm going, thank you. Thank it's you. about time you recognize. Right. And so it, it's very funny. And then I'll argue on another level. I'll say, I'm actually probably more Christian than you are. 
If Jesus came today, I promise you, we'd be friends. He, he would have more in contact with shamans and yep. gurus than he would with the pastor of first. I won't say a denomination, but <laughs> but um, most of we Christianity and churchism has so evolved away from the mystical side of who Jesus was and is. Absolutely. And so I would say I got to a point that I started realizing that there's more out there. It just made no sense to me to grow up in a tradition saying that we believe something but didn't have life living proof of it. That just didn't make sense. Now, I understand some of our brothers and sisters that go a little more academic, educational, and it's definitely more scholarly. That I understand because they're, it, they're in congruence with their faith. Everyone else, the way I grew up, it just didn't make sense. It, we believe for cancer, but Jesus can't heal the cold, or, you know, this happened in the Old Testament, but not the New Testament, and that was this dispensationalism. And I can talk that conversation. It's boring to me, but I can. But it just, if we serve God and spirit, and it's living, it's active, then why not now? Right. And definitely when you understand scriptures in a relationship with Jesus, Jesus was an extreme heretic. He was a magician. He was, a, most people have probably never heard that. Um, he, he, he was did, visited by magi it, when he which, was a baby, which, which were are magicians. magicians and people don't the, realize diviners that. who didn't even know what the scriptures were. Absolutely. They charted the zodiac to find the astrologers. It's right, and that's where it's really funny because I like you realize that the men that found Jesus were astrologers. So when I say I do astrology and tarot reading, it's actually not weird. <laughs> right. And you teach about it and talk about it at least on Easter, so it's okay. They knew th those <laughs> astrologers knew more about Jesus than uh, Herod did because he he didn't even know they had to go find somebody that knew the scriptures and they connected the dots that, that the prophecy was he was going to be in Bethlehem, but the prophecy was already in the stars. It didn't it didn't come through an Old Testament prophecy. Absolutely, they foreknew it. Woo! See, it's it get us stirred prophecies up here. in the stars. Jesus <laughs> hashtag prophecy <laughs> in the stars. <laughs> For all my millennials out there. <laughs> hashtag just had a 10th anniversary this week. Did you know it was the 10th anniversary of the hashtag? We need to hashtag the hashtag. I think we need to do that. Hashtag the hashtag. So um, yep. I t one thing, I what, what uh, my observation of you is new. I don't want to say it's limited. It's okay. It's I'm, new. I'm being judged right now. It's good. But no, what I like about it is you are unapologetic about where you are. Oh, absolutely. And what little bit, I've, I've watched some of your videos and I've read some of the things that you've I loved what you posted this morning about uh, the meme about time. Yes, because I'm ve versus. very much into Kairos and Kronos and how ah, that all relates together. Yes, and our because I'm I'm believing, I see this more and more. Time is changing, and it's not just because I'm aging. It's easy for people to say, "Oh, well, you're getting older, so it just go." It's good. No, this is yeah. something different. I'm enough of a spiritual man to know something has changed about time, mm -hmm. the way that we're perceiving it, and I think at some point it's going to change the way we age. I think it's going to change a lot of things, and I even think some of the negative things that are happening on the surface and the earth are actually the darkest before the dawn. I think they they nearly the chaos nearly yeah. has to happen yeah. for the truth to come out of that. It's very interesting that you say that because um, you're actually right. You're actually not saying a lot of what you want to say, but that's okay. I'll say what you want to say. It's fine. Um, that um, a lot of what we are in the space of time is actually a form of darkness, which is actually okay. It's supposed to happen. The situation politically, um, sociologically, is actually supposed to happen. Um, all life uh, proceeds from darkness and we don't talk about that a lot especially in the traditional church because we assume that oh darkness is I, I evil um, that Satan did it and again when I say Satan I don't say it from a, a right. bad place I actually believe in other um, energetic spirits that are resistant to you call it Satan Lucifer whatever but um, we're actually in that space right now um, there are a lot of things in our timeline spiritually speaking that have shifted with us actually happened about two three years ago in that regard so a lot of people that have been um, I'll give you a good understanding. If you feel like you, you're starting to lose memory in certain parts of your understanding, like you're thinking of, you know, I don't know what I did when I was 10. I have no memory when I was 15 or 20 or 30. That's actually what happened. A lot of people went through this kind of metamorphosis um, standpoint. And so you're actually shedding a lot of your old skin, your old personality into a new realm. It's, but I would go into what? like the, the coming of Christ, but that's a whole nother. Wait, say, say that again? It, it's actually a form of the great falling away that is, discuss and it actually talks about the um, in those days knowledge shall be increased which is not necessarily the mental intellect side of things it's actually the <sighs> so you're actually in a, a good place many people are here in a good place in that regard it's it's actually more scriptural than people realize the second coming is not specifically a um, entity coming from the clouds it's 
as it is a um, Christ consciousness coming from the cloud of the imagination, the, um, the news, the mind uh, of it coming forth out of us. So that's actually what's happening is Christ is coming forth, and um, it's interesting. Space. The day star is yeah. arising in our hearts. Why do you stand here gazing in the clouds? Wow. Yeah. Because that's not where he's coming back. The right. clouds that he's coming back is where every eye will see him. Right. All right, we're going to yeah. take a we're going <laughs> to put a comma right there. This comma. is some good stuff. Tell Calvin Witcher how much we appreciate this. <laughs> Stay right where you are. Thank you for being with us on In the Now with Jim Swilly. We'll see you next time. Okay. Woo! Lord, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> Stay right I'll there. I'll try to I'll try to